In the next two segments of PNG tonight, we talk to the Bishop of Bahrain, Roku Statamai, who accompanied Cardinal Sir John Ribet to the Vatican to be installed by the Pope. He says it was a trip of his lifetime to witness a rare event in Catholicism that involved a clergy from his province and also someone he succeeded as Bishop of Berena. Bishop, thank you for your time. You accompanied our new Cardinal to the Vatican to complete all the formalities. Uh, tell us about it. Thanks, John. Uh, it for me it was a, a lifetime experience uh, to be present and see the uh, actual uh, event took take place mm -hmm. the um, what they call the creation of the cardinals yes. the technical word is a uh, consistory in it is when the, uh, the holy father meets with the cardinals but this time uh, it was uh, the holy father creating cardinals they, 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 the right word uh, that they use is not ordaining them or is not uh, uh, you know laying any hands on them but is creating them uh, to be cardinals, yes. so that means the naming of them and then the actual ceremony uh, is that they have to come up and they have to receive from the Holy Father the, the right, the uh, red barretta, uh -huh. the cap, and also a ring from uh, the Holy Father signifying that uh, the, the um, being created as cardinals and at the same time they are being nominated as uh, uh, parish priests in the parishes around in, in, in Rome with something I never learned about, I never heard. So he's an archbishop and now a cardinal, but at the same time he is a parish priest. So he's, a, he's our cardinal here, but a parish priest in the Vatican? Yes, to uh, one of the parishes in, in, in Rome. Because that's back to the history of the, uh, of the cardinals, they were uh, actually parish priests of parishes in Rome, okay. who were the inner circle and the advisors to the Holy Father. <laughs> so this is the history, like they are reliving it, but calling you know, cardinals from all over the world, each one of them is designated a parish, and there is a, a ceremony that goes with it for them to take possession of their parishes. Okay, will he ever conduct church or mass over there one time? Yes, okay. when, every time when he comes to Rome, this is the church he has to go to, okay. and he has to celebrate mass, so the cardinal has to somehow start learning uh, Italian for that matter, okay. because uh, his parishioners will be Italian. So will he, will he have uh, his own uh, Followers, parish, uh, par parishioners, if you like, uh, over there? Certainly. We, we, <laughs> we, we went, uh, one of those uh, c celebrations after being created cardinal uh, was to go and uh, we have to introduce him to his parish. Some other cardinals were already taking possession of their par uh, parishes. He cannot do it immediately because he wanted to come back first. And then when he returns back to Rome, maybe next year, then this celebration is to take place where he will actually formally come to the parish and then, uh, you know, there's some formalities that has to be to, to happen there where they will be seen as the parish priest. So at the moment, the parish priest that is in his parish, we, we saw him, then we met and talked with him. He's almost like a, he's caretakering for his parish. <laughs> <laughs> something we didn't know, something you didn't know. No, we, we discovered these things. Uh, okay, but along. going there, uh, was it easy? What sort of procedure did you have to go through? Uh, travel was all right? Traveling in itself was okay. Uh, the problem is the getting to the process to travel. Like I had no idea that I will be really going because I was on keen because I have no Schengen visa. Okay, okay. Previously it was easier when we used to receive the Schengen visa from the French embassy here in Port Mosby. And only until last year they told us that uh, for uh, Schengen visas we have to get it somewhere else. And they were recommending Sydney and Brisbane or Canberra. But the problem is with Sydney and, Ken, uh, Sydney and uh, Brisbane, you have to make appointments first. Yes. And it depends on the appointments. They will give you time and you come and they interview you and, uh, and, and all that. Yeah. But, but it's it still mean two days, three days, three weeks? Long time. It, you know, mm. the, the lady, one of the ladies who actually participated in this process, they told her in Brisbane that this whole process will take 10 minutes or 10 days. <laughs> and she said, if 10 days, then forget about it because this, uh, what is happening in Rome is going to happen within 10 days, yeah, before yeah, 10 days yeah, is up. Yeah, 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 so, uh, but for me, I have to go all the way to Canberra because yeah. in Canberra there is no appointment. You have to walk in personally, they get your fingerprints and have the interview with you, oh, present no. your papers. Oh. I didn't have one paper. Why such rigid formalities uh, for, a, for a clergy? We are almost uh, experiencing something that they made in Europe 
as a, a rule for this border protection. Okay. And uh, this is really affecting us outside here in uh, like Papua New Guinea. And for the Pacific countries, it's easier for the small nations. They actually arriving in Europe, say for instance in France or Italy. On arrival, they are issuing them nine days visa on arrival, mm -hmm. free of charge. And only Fiji and Papua New Guinea, uh, we have to go through this lengthy process. What's the matter with these two countries? I think it's to do with, for me, I'm thinking that we are, they are treating us as, as ter potential terrorists, <laughs> that we can be causing trouble in Europe. So we have to go through this uh, whole process, yeah. making it harder. All right. And so uh, I actually found out from uh, speaking, I registered my complaints with two ambassadors that yeah. were there, uh, Joshua Kalinoy. Uh, who is uh, resident in, uh, in Brussels and right. also uh, Ambassador, Ambassador Max Rai coming from the United Nations. And I said, this, this is uh, ridiculous. Yes, yes. Why do we have to go through a second country to be able to process could our visa? Could it be then, uh, Bishop, that uh, maybe our government, government, the government arrangements are not there? I heard that uh, our government has not signed off okay. on the papers. So the problem here is that foreign affairs, why Ghana? It is. And we are feeling it. Now, I think one of the points that I would like to stress is maybe it's easier for government people to travel because they need to spend days in Australia or <laughs> yes. the Philippines or yeah. Malaysia yeah. or Singapore. At wait, our waiting, expense. At our mm -hmm. expense, mm -hmm. of course, waiting for their visas to travel. For us, ordinary people, it's costing us more. Yes. Yes. Uh, it, it's, so a visa will be like maybe $88 in Australia. But then you, t you take into account the uh, travel arrangements the taxes that you have to back and forth, yes, yes, and then yes. the resident to stay somewhere. So it's very, very expensive. Okay, something yeah. for foreign affairs and the government of PNG to think about and do something. But it wasn't all that bad. There were some good things. Yes. Uh, coming back, uh, you uh, went through some good times as well. Of course, uh, after you have the visa, then you have the certainty that you're going to fly. And I think at this point, I just would like to um, acknowledge uh, New Guinea, because they actually offered a package to the Cardinal and his secretary and, okay. and myself. Uh, myself, I was like refusing to, to go, but uh, the New Guinea, uh, in, a, in particular in uh, Sir Fred Raya, who was saying to me that you are from Rabaul, and he is, uh, the cardinal is, uh, is with you, a uh, senior of the Sacred Heart, and he was Bishop of Berena before you, so all the boxes are ticked for you to be the only person <laughs> who is qualified to go with him. And they gave you a better seat on New Guinea. They gave us... I would I say it's, it was like a, a maiden lifetime travel <laughs> with courtesy of New Guinea. Right, yes. right. A bad experience going there, but uh, blessed, if you will, at the Vatican, but coming back, a good experience. Yes, both going to, to Europe and coming back, it was, as I said, it was a maiden lifetime voyage. Okay. <laughs>